Good morning. So we are leaving Dale's campground. Gosh, it was a lovely peaceful night here last night. You really did feel like you were out in the wild. It was beautiful. And we now have uh, oh, just over six hours, it says on the sat nav, but by the time we've stopped a few times, about seven hours trek back down to the coast. So we're headed towards Broome, but we're going to stop um, that 80 mile beach. Otherwise, it'd be an 11 hour drive. Oh, that's too much. Um, so we should get there what, mid, uh, early mid afternoon and uh, just chill out, and then tomorrow morning we'll be off to Broome. Anyway, I'll see if I can show you some of the scenery of Kalbari as we're leaving because it's a really, really stunning place. And uh, so I'll show you that as we're leaving. And then if I see anything exciting on the way, I'll give you a show. <laughs> so we say goodbye to Karajini, not Kalbari. <laughs> I keep saying Kalbari because I'm doing the Kalbari video at the moment, but we're in Karajini and we're saying goodbye to it. And this is the landscape as we're leaving. Just look at the size of this. These gorgeous as they go up and oh all the trees and the termite mounds. If I said Kabari earlier as well, I obviously meant Karajini. Um, I'm a bit windsor. Um, yeah, so that was Dell's campground in Karajini. And we are now off to 18 Mile Beach. And as I say, if I see anything else interesting on the way, I will stop and show you. came on. Restart. Restart. I can't now, can we? Because we've gone past the bloody thing. <laughs> I was just trying to show you the road trains. They've got really big. We're on Highway 95 now. Just got out of Calbarri and I just to show you this scenery. I mean, look at this and the driving through. Isn't it? Stunning! That's another road train the other side. I think they are quite good because we did find that when because you can't see past them and uh, they indicate that it's safe for you to go past them. But uh, of course there's quite a lot of them on this road because it is the main road and they are getting longer the further north we go. <laughs> do their business haven't they right so i keep this on the front windscreen so you've probably seen it quite a lot and wonder what it is so to get into the national parks in western australia you need to pay an entrance fee i think it's like i think it's 12 dollars don't quote me on that it's something like that every time you go into a park so like when we went into the pinnacles um, when we went into the ningaloo national park cape cape um, Oh gosh, I forgot what it's called now, but the one next to Dingaloo Park and then also when we were in Francis Perot. So rather than keep paying the individual fees, we brought a holiday pass. So you pay for a month and it cost me uh, $50. I think it went up actually, I think I paid $60 for this. But it saves me a lot of money and this one is a four week pass. And then you just have to leave it in your windscreen, which is why you always see that stuff there. and then we could just go straight through into the national parks. And when we cross the border into the Northern Territory, I have another pass that covers uh, the Northern Territory parks, but it will not cover Kakadu. We have to get a separate pass for that and it will not cover Ayers Rock. So, or Uluru, we have to get a separate pass for that. And so, similarly in Western Australia, this one does cover most of them, but it doesn't cover El Questro, uh, where we have to spy. Uh, a different passport but everything else is covered so it's definitely if you're doing a long trip it's definitely worth getting it you know i think if you do more than three parks you're going to save some money yeah. oh look at this scenery i know my windows are dirty i did clean them the other day look 
clean them at the garage, but they're always messy. We do, oh my goodness, I must tell you. Right, we take it in turns to enter, empty the porta potty each day. And oh, actually, look at the colours of that rock, that's pretty. Um, and today was monk turn. Oh gosh, and I opened it, so they have all these, what do they call them? Dump points. Easy, easy dump. Easy dump points, and they have them all over the place. Like you, know, you can see, because they're blue, and you just lift the lid, and you get rid of your waste, and it's a good one. But it's my turn today. We went to one. Oh my goodness! It was so full, it was overflowing, and I was like, I'm not doing it, blue, because as soon as I pour anything in it, it's just going to splash right back on me. Oh, oh, I've never seen anything like it. So that's the, some of the joys of camping. And that's yeah, one of the only, horrible joys. Down there, so we can dump it anywhere. Yeah, that's the truth. If you didn't hit blue, so we only actually um, we in it. Um, we don't do the other thing. We, um, we, uh, we find papers. and we don't put any paper down it. So it, you know we, we can dispose of it quite easily. And um, in the toilet, of course. And in the toilet, if we have to. Yes. Yeah. I have to say the toilets there were horrible as well. That maggots on the seat. Oh. oh. But in general, when we stop, and this is like stopping on the side of the road, in general, they've been very clean, haven't they? They've been well looked after. <coughs> this yep. one was just, <coughs> yep. it wasn't nice at all. But they are sort of geared up for campers around here, and they do have facilities around, but no, this one was a bad one. <laughs> would be on my turn, wouldn't it? <laughs> so the scenery has changed already. It's, uh, Flat. Very flat. Makes you uh, think of the plains in uh, America. Makes blue think of the plains in America. You know, bison running around and stuff like that. Yeah. Not that I've been, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I've been either, but I've seen the films. It's so, just like very flat. Come the hills again. I want to show you uh, how the road trains work. So next time we come up to one, as you come up to them, they indicate for you to show you that it's safe to pass. It's very kind, isn't it? It's a very civilized way of getting around people. So next time we come up to one, I'll show you how it works. Yesterday we saw. They have road train stops. Here oh, we go. Yeah. Look, he's indicating for us, telling us it's safe to go. So you may notice that the cars drive with their lights on, even in the day. So, like, we have our lights on and they have theirs. And Blue will explain the reason why. What? Well, I think it's so because when they're a long way away and you want to overtake, sometimes you can't see the car. There's a lot of press and there's shimmer in the road um, from the heat, but you can't quite make out what's there or not. And, uh, driving this many miles makes you hypnotised anyway. So uh, we think that's the reason. So you don't overtake and kill somebody, as you know. So it's just basically, I think, a safety thing. I'm sure if there's any Aussies. Watch your channels, I mean, they'll explain it better than me, but that's what we think it is. We think it's just for safety. So, if we've not got that right, please tell us why everybody drives with their lights on during the day. But for us, it doesn't really help because, like they say, it's a shimmer. I, I think it does help. It yeah. does help because yeah, you can't. Me, yeah, because yeah, sometimes when you're looking, especially on the really, really long straight roads, you see there's the heat just shimmering on the road. You can't see anything. Yeah, like at the end there, you can't Yeah, you just out. can't make it out. It's just it's like, hot now, uh, right? yeah. yeah, you get like a, you know what I mean when the heat's rising. And uh, you just can't do it. And because you're always looking at horizons with rows and rows and rows, and it is very hypnotizing. Uh, if you have your lights on, it does help. You can see them coming over the corner. They just stand out over the heat. 
Huh? Yeah, and he, he did have his on. The guy going past us didn't have his on. And not everybody does, but we did. We found that it was easier, so we well, keep we ours on now. Anyway, so. Yeah, they did advise us at the camper place that we should put them on. But yep, that does help. And is this a river we're coming up to, Blue Water or not? This is a river, a dry river, man. Yeah. Yeah, Pingo Twip. Dry. Every time we go past one of these rivers or creeks, we say, "Would it be dry or wet?" <clears throat> They're always dry, except for I think we saw water in two. Yeah. Just two. And it was a lot of water. Everything is dry. But this is why, why we can come. But this one's dry or wet? Dry. Dry. Oh, there's a little puddle there. Oh, little puddle in there. Yeah. I mean, you, it is dry season. Um, and obviously we're doing this trip at this time and people are saying like why do you come to Perth in the winter because you can't do the Gibb River Road in the wet season and um, you know the north gets very wet so in order to do the, the Kimberleys we have to come at this time of year so it's all dry but that waterfall Joffrey's waterfall was dry yesterday but the other one the other one was called, but the one at Dales Gorge, Fortis, Fortescue's Falls, is a permanent waterfall, so we did get to see one. Hopefully we'll get to see some in the Gibb River Road, uh, but I don't know how much water there will be. Is this a river we're coming up to, Blue? Water or not? This is a river, a dry river. Pingo Twip. Dry. Every time we go past one of these rivers or creeks, we say, would it be dry or wet? <clears throat> They're always dry, except for I think we saw water in two. Yeah. Just two. And it was a lot of water. Everything is dry. But this is why, why we can come. But this one's dry or wet? Dry. Dry. Oh, there's a little puddle there. Oh, little puddle in there. Yeah. I mean, you, it is dry season. Um, and obviously, we're doing this trip at this time. And people are saying, like, why do you come to Perth in the winter? Because you can't do the Gibb River Road in the wet season. And, um, you know, the north gets very wet. So in order to do the, the Kimberleys, we have to come at this time of year. So it's all dry. But that waterfall, Joffrey's waterfall, was dry yesterday. But the other one, uh, not what the other one was called, but the one at Dales Gorge, Fortis, Fortescue's Falls, is a permanent waterfall. So we did get to see one. Hopefully we'll get to see some in the Gibb River Road. Uh, but I don't know how much water there will be. very red in Australia so I just showed you the red rocks so when we we have in this van now white sand red sand red dust white dust gravel red gravel white gravel and it's everywhere our beds are red <laughs> the floor of the van is so red well we've tried scrubbing it off it won't come off then we're gonna have to bleach it off um, <laughs> it just gets everywhere um, clothes like I, I just put clean top on today and it's already red my white t-shirt from yesterday red <laughs> shoes red we think we've got a tan and then we have a shower and <laughs> it all comes off <laughs> uh, well I mean, it used to be really well quite frantic about sweeping the van out every time I think we've even got bored of sweeping the van out <laughs> He blue just complains when I because I have to step on his bed to get to my <laughs> He's always like, oh there's red footprints on my bed. <laughs> oh sorry, I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> but there's footprints everywhere. <laughs> he's sniggering a little bit though, so he's not that upset about it. <laughs> um, you certainly get dirty doing this road trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Right, so we have just pulled over, which we do. So we try and do two hour driving stints each. Blue has done two hours 25, so it's my turn now. So you probably won't get any filming now because Blue doesn't like picking up the camera. <laughs> but we'll soon be in Port Hedland. And we just read an interesting fact, which right, so it's the um, second largest town in the Pilbara region with just under 16,000 people living there, including South Hedland. Wow, it's so spread out here, isn't it? Hardly anybody's there. And uh, third largest iron ore port place. Hmm. Anyway, well, I'll have to go refuel there, so we'll see if we see anything interesting. Yeah, it will, but it's still filming. Huh? It's still filming. How do you know what you're looking at? Because you're just pointing in the right direction. Mm. So this is old, an iron ore place. What do you call it? An iron ore. Why are you pointing at me? You're talking. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, God. I'm not here, big cafe, but we've already had this discussion. <laughs> I carry water, I'm the town donkey. I cook some meals. Well, they give it here, aren't they? Fill up the water See? But you ain't doing this driving. Oh. Safety first. Honestly. Yeah. So, where's the port headland? Must just be. Well, can only be about 10 kilometres. seen a garage yet. Oh, broom! Oh, broom. Wow, well, it's just a, this is a real industrial town. It's all that scrap metal. I suppose that, I, I, is that, I don't know much about iron ore industry. What do they do? Grind all that down? I don't know. Melt it? I don't know. Oh, that's a big plane. Oh, look at the size of that. Look how many pulleys it's got it. Got a wood's big screen. Over the case of the nuclear factory on the down south of the UK. Oh. Apparently, it's the world's biggest crane. You can that, carry a million tons? No, that, don't, that sounds a lot. That sounds. A tons. That does. A thousand tons? No, that doesn't sound enough. Well, it might be a thousand, I don't know. Can we stop? So we have left Port Headland about 100 kilometres away and we've got about, I don't know, 130 to go until we get to 18 Mile Beach Caravan Park. Yeah, be there in about an hour and 20. And the car says it is now 41 degrees outside. And we just stopped to have some lunch, which we they got back in the car and put the aircon on to eat it. <laughs> it was roasting. I thought Karajini was hot, but this, this is something else. And the landscape is completely different. Have a look at this. It's just barren. This is what... It's greenery, but... This is what being in the middle of nowhere looks like. There's no road trains anymore. There's a few cars, a couple of caravans, but a very, very long road. And they're so, it's so hot here. We had to swap over driving again because, oh, honestly, I couldn't, all I could see was like a mirage over the road after a bit. 
eyes. Oh, just does it, it does your eyes in. Um, yeah. Anyway, nice to see something different. Very flat. Very flat, very sandy. Basically, yeah, very green. Not very tall trees though. Anyway, we should be there soon. Oh, it's been a long drive. Well, we've arrived at 80 Mile Beach and we're just going down the driveway now. It's just a bit rough. Now, I've got a towel on my head because the sun has been beating through this window for the last couple of hours and I've got a headache. Uh, it went up to 42 and it's going down now. It's, going, it's gone down to 36, I think, because we're getting near the coast. Um, we've got this drive to go through for, hmm, well, it's 10 kilometres long. Oh, is it? Well, you've got seven left to do. So just this track down. As far as I'm aware, this is the only caravan park on 80 Mile Beach. <sighs> I'd be glad to get out of this car, but not in that heat. Oh, blimey, it's hot. <laughs> it's really hot. Um, but thankfully, it's cooling down. So what, Karajini was, what, 34, 35? Oh, when we were right. Yeah, 36. I think when we arrived, oh, I did not feel well at all. I think that's because there's, you're sitting in the car, there's sun on your head and you're driving and it's hot. Um, but then yesterday, we were fine in that heat. So we might feel a little bit queasy today because it's been a long old drive. But we've made good time. It's nearly it's half past four. Yeah, we've done it in six. Yeah, we've done it in six hours. We only stopped for a pee break. Yeah, we only stopped quickly for lunch and the toilet a couple of times. So we should be there by half one and then we could just relax all afternoon. Do the laundry. Maybe do some laundry. Actually, I've got time to do some laundry. Yeah, Depends how hot it is, then how far the laundry is to walk to. Um, oh gosh, you cannot believe how much laundry we've got. We've got. And so I was planning to, when we get to Brew, like pull everything out because the van's a state as well. Get all the sheets clean and get everything because we're there for two nights. We can kind of get it washed and dried. You said, it, not we, you said you. You said I could bugger off fishing the way you saw it all there. Oh yeah, I don't want him messing around while I'm trying to clean the van out. He just gets in the way, he puts everything in the wrong place. Every time he puts things in covers, they're in the wrong place. No, no, no. You just chuck it in the cupboard, then when I come to cook the tea, I can't work anything. Yeah, anyway, nearly there. Oh, it's dusty here. Look, the caravan in front of us is kicking up the right dust. 35. Oh, 35 degrees. It's still hot. Still it's still hot, but it's not 40. Two. 42. 42 in that middle of nowhere land. Oh, my days. They told us there was farms there and people working. I don't know how they do it, I really don't. I can barely sit in the car. <laughs> So what? Oh, well, it's just going to keep getting hotter and hotter now. Can you remember? And less than two weeks ago, it was 19, 20 in Perth and raining. Now, oh, God, I, I love a bit of rain now. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's a marine park. Stop. Where are we going? Where's the reception zone? Is that the over there? Reception. Okay. Oh, wow. And this is checking at reception. Oh, well, Your I've got destination here, is on the right. Right, you've got to go check in. Right, we've got to stop here and I've got to go and check, check in. in. So here we are in our campsite. Very nice, isn't it? Look, there's a sand dunes right behind us and. Um, a little walk up to the beach, which we're going to have a look at in a minute. Um, there's a lot of poop around. I don't know if it's kangaroo or what, but uh, I guess we'll find that in due course. I'm just going to walk through here to go and see about the laundry because we've got so much of it. <laughs> I'll just show you quickly around the camp. So over there is the walkway up to the beach. Now, um, Blue's happy because he can fish here and it's a great place for fishing. Um, but I can't swim or snorkel here because there's a lot of sharks, sea snakes and stingrays. So she said, best not to go further than my ankles. Great. But I shall go down there and have a look. Oh, 
I'll tell you what, it's better now. It's not stinking hot like it was when we came. Right, so this is where we came in. We've got a couple of bungalows here. And the reception, they had a little shop. Toilets. And around here, I'm hoping is laundry. Oh, there are all the gents. Where are the ladies? Oh, that's the little camp kitchen. Oh, and there's the laundry. So, uh, five one pound coins. Oh, we don't have any one pound coins. I'm going to see if I can get some change. And see if we can get some laundry done. But anyway, at least they've got some facilities. Yeah, that's quite nice. Cap bread. Now, we're lucky because we've been put right at the end. <clears throat> As you can see, it's a, quite a busy campsite. But we're happy because we've been put on the end and you've got a little outdoor camp kitchen and eating area yeah very happy with it right let's go and sort laundry if we can and then get to the beach okay we're off up to the beach at the marine park it's open tropical waters there is not swim at your own risk now we've already been told we shouldn't swim because of sea snakes, sharks, and stingrays. And jellyfish. And I'm not sure they did say about jellyfish, but we should be able to see quite a lot. So we have to wear our reef shoes. You remember my reef shoes from previous video? Oh my gosh, look how far out you got to walk. Let's have a look what we might see. Turtles. Turtles now at certain times of the year they do come up here and hatch. Maybe we should have brought the car down here, Blue. <laughs> okay, there is a place where you can bring your car down onto the beach as long as you're back off by seven. But I just want to see what's in the water. And Blue wants to fish because the guy next to us caught shark today. Look at this place. It's pretty amazing actually, isn't it? This is 80 Mile Beach. You don't want to go near everyone else, do you? Oh, it's still piping hot out here. But... We've done some laundry and it's hanging up now. Should be dry by the time we finish messing around out here. Um, oh, look, there's loads of cars up there. Yeah, but we didn't know the sound was this up. See what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, and also, once we've got that set up, we don't want to pack it up and have to do it again on the same day. If we could drive it off the truck thing, we would just to leave the truck there set up, won't we? But it's not an option. Anyway, let's go see if we can find some animals. Sorry, I'll set up the thingy line and give it to you and I'll do lures while you fish with the sardini. Mm, lovely. What's, what, what are those? What, are those little, wor are they wormholes? Probably something that wants to kill us though. I know, I'm not allowed to go swimming or snorkeling. But he's trying to persuade me to do fishing with him. We'll see. Well, I've got two rods in. He's got two rods. He's got his sardines to catch a shark. So I'll give you the mullet one to hold. The sardine one to hold. And then what I can do is I can do the lure. Oh, so I catch the shark? Well, no, we get <laughs> to do both then, don't we? Mm -hmm. Well, let me have, I'm going to have a little explore first on the edge, Aww. see what I can see. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin the fishing adventure. <laughs> I'm sure I'll sign up for a fishing adventure. You didn't bring me a chair. <laughs> anyway, let's see how we get on. Oh, 
and I saw a load of kangaroos when I went up to the bathrooms and they were hanging around the cottages so there is poop everywhere so now we know it's kangaroo poop hopefully we'll have loads of kangaroos around us this evening how cool is that because we haven't seen one yet two hooks on but I'm just putting one you can just go half I'll try it with half can't you you better take your sardine pot with you in case you lose your sardine well, I, I can see that happening, <laughs> I've got to be honest. Ah, oh, that's why there was three hooks on there. Yeah, I don't think that's going to hold it. He did say when they caught the shark earlier that it had several hooks in it. Ah, uh, so it's an idiot shark. What do you reckon? That looks pretty solid to me. We'll find that in a minute when we lose the sardine. Oh, stink of fish. Oh, that bloody sick. <coughs> so hold that a minute. Uh, hold what? Hold, hold. hold that a second. I'm going to have to do the bag up because the seagull's there. All right, let's do this side. Oh, it smells of fish. Right, we have to watch where we step. No stingrays. Oh, it's warm. It is warm, actually. How are we supposed to see a stingray in this? I don't think it's this shallow, is it? Oh, I don't know, remember that one in Antigua I stood on? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. No, actually... I'm past over there, you see? I'm, I don't know if I want to go out that far. See how deep it is. Well, you good. can't cast it there, you're going to crack... You're uh, not going to... on your left, Sammy. What's your left? Oh, that side. Why? Because I don't want to hit you with the light. Hmm. So he's going to get up to about there. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if the sardines don't. Is there a bit more? I don't know, it's a bit murky. You can't really see anything in the bottom. I'll try from here. Just try, because it's getting quite... She said to me don't go any deeper than this. Secure the sardine. Oh no, I'm going on there. I see you can't see if a sea snake comes or anything. Just keep moving our feet. Oh! <laughs> That's me watch for it. I've got every watch for it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Give me your watch. Yeah. <laughs> Grab your sardine. <laughs> All right, come back to bed. The sardine's put... down there. I'm... Where? I just saw it here. God, it's lost his sardine. Leave a fry Go and put the free hooks on like you're supposed to. Oh my God. What a palaver. Oh, <laughs> this is why I don't go bloody fishing. Oh, now it's going to be cross. I've got that. Ooh. See, got to come in. He's <laughs> after his sardines. Yeah, bring it here. Now look, you see, those people are not that deep. He's got a sea king rod. All right. Don't hook me. Oh, Didn't know that. It's something what buzzing around me. Stop. <laughs> Stay, there's still. flies! Of course there's flies, because there's... Uh... <sighs> yeah, it should secure the sardine better. We've already lost one. How many sardines we got? Well, I've only got two halves. So we've only got another two goes? No, no, I bought a load of birds. There we go. All right. Probably lose, we'll probably lose all the hooks there. Hey. Probably lose all the hooks this time. Yeah, probably. No, no, no. All right, well, your watch is still working. I'm, I'm thinking, would it be better in my pocket? 
be better in the sun, but I don't want to leave it out because you've got sardines bloody everywhere. Oh yeah, we've got a juicy head. <coughs> you guys really find this fun? Everyone finds it fishing fun. So I don't think that's worn off now. That's what he said last time. <coughs> he says his famous last words. I think I'm going to say with my shoulders though, with kids are going to get wet. What about my water pole? Stick it in my bag. I want to put the other rod out. Where I'm should gonna... I put this? I don't want to put it in my pocket in case I... What, my watch? Yeah, I'll put it in here. Yeah. See, look, see, he's doing the same. He's going out and casting it and then it goes. That's what we got to do. Hang on, I've got to put my water in yesterday. <laughs> Everything's getting blown away here. Oh, it was open. No, it was open. <gasps> no! <laughs> Closed it. Right. Okay. Do you need it zipped up? Might have zipped up there. Right. All right. Round two. Right. Here we go for round two. Our man is going to stink of bloody sardines tonight. Right, just throw it from around here and see how you do because no one else is going this deep, Blue. And I'm sorry, but I trust what Australians are doing more than us. Didn't have your real set up. What's why? Why? What's wrong? I don't think this was any good for this. I know it's crisscross at the top. Oh, so I've got a crisscross. No, just hold the end. Yeah. Seagulls are after you. It's still not right, is it? Oh, I don't know how it's supposed to go. It's not right. Well, reel it and see what happens. Well, how's it supposed to be? He's, he's, he's folded over. It. Oh. He's after you, Sophie. Just Right, there we go. Let's right. try it now. Hurry up, seagulls are waiting for you. Seagulls are going to get it before I catch it. Right, let's try again. Here we go again. <gasps> oh, those naughty seagulls! Little buggers. Did, did they get it? I don't think so, but that was a good pass and get it out of the Hopefully it's still on there. Oh, it's gone light all of a sudden. It's coming off. Oh, no, it's still on there. And it's just... Where's the rest of him? Where's his head gone? Oh, his head's there. Oh, he's got Hold on to that. Mm. Right, so he just needs to get it a bit further there. Well, he's only going to last one more chuck, isn't he? The other thing's going to last that, I'm totally honest. Let's try it. Please stay on. Please stay Here on. comes the seagulls.
do? What do you want me to do? Oh, All you've got to do, so I'll turn it up and, and then wait for something that hits it. So I'm going to set up my other rod. What? what I'm just standing here like this? Yeah, but you've make it a bit tight. Well, I'm turning around my camera. Tell me when it's pulling. Is, Is it, it pulling? Um, no. Well, I don't know. No. No, something's pulling a bit. Right, so just leave it. Moving with the tie. What am I waiting for? Wait for something to pull it. What, so I just keep keep it taut? If it goes tight and it starts pulling, the something's on the end. <coughs> right, I'm going to set up the other pod. Okay, so you alright? Oh! Ooh! Something's nibbling on that, Zoe. Stop, stay still. Oh, you can see it's nibbling on that. Yeah, it's nibbling on that. Right, I'm going to turn it up and see what happens. Nah. Might be the tide. Might be the tide, I think. <coughs> yeah, don't keep, don't keep reeling. You told me to make it taut. <coughs> no, no. Yeah. Oh, no, have I been stuck with this? Try to hold my camera. I don't know what I'm doing. Keep it taut, don't move it. Oh, the really down with sardines still on there. <laughs> I went out quite a way. So just let it, mm. don't press anything at the moment, I'll push a clip over. Don't do anything, no? It's all the way in. So don't... No, 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 yeah, let it, let, let the line still moving about. Alright, now flip it over. Now pull it just till it's a bit tight, so you can feel a bit of tension. <sighs> I got roped into fishing, I didn't catch a thing. Oh. But at least it kept him happy for a bit, eh? Now we're, uh, we're now walking back up to our caravan, in time for showers, and there we go. That's the. <sighs> I'm very sweaty. Well, it's been a very hot day. I'm still covered in red dust everywhere. But I'm hoping we'll have some kangaroos around tonight. It's very lovely here, actually. Um, definitely a place. If I was to come again, I might make a couple of days of it. I think if you're a fisherman, this is perfect. If you're a swimmer and a snorkeler like me, not so much. <laughs> but uh, for fishing. Anyway, that was my first time ever fishing. I got nothing, but hey how? At least I know how to lure fish now. I'm gonna leave it there. We will go and have dinner, showers, and uh, tomorrow we'll be in Broome. So much adventures. Do you know it's been, tomorrow it'll be two, no, today it's two weeks since we left the UK. No, we arrived in Perth. We left on the Thursday ride in, in Perth. And I cannot believe what we've achieved in two weeks already. Oh, it's exhausted. But all good fun. I'm having a great time. So I'll catch up with you tomorrow when we're in Broome. Have a good day.